Hey, 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 my name is Paul Slings. Welcome to Sunrider Liberation Day. Return. Return because, well, we have uh, an expansion here. But, uh, two, uh, two endings completed. We'll move to the next one very shortly. But before that, I will obviously skip to the first choice, which is very important here. So, see you in a few seconds. Alrighty, so the plan is right now to actually go a bit, a bit expected maybe, I don't know. I would go with Ikari because, well, I said she was my favorite in the game always, but I feel like we will go differently. Let's go with Asaga this time. Nobody else was going to believe a wacky story like this, except for a saga, of course. The ship's ace pilot and self-proclaimed hero of justice would of course be more than eager to join the secret mission to save the galaxy. No other person in Shids and Torridge had a bigger enthusiasm for Craig Rare Jack adventures. Alright, I have my decision. We're going to recruit a saga, come on, let's go find her. Okay, let's go! T minus 63 hours until Liberation Day, Massacre, 27 hours a day until that little girl enters the mind stream. Knowing Kosaka, she would most likely be in the hangar, partying in the simulator. Yeah, that's true, actually. Shields and Cloud snuck onto the floor of Deck 2 and headed to the Blackjack, hidden amongst the steel frames of the Rider base. Sure enough, they found a saga hanging out around her rider with a distant face. What was I doing? I've been losing my temper so easily lately. I hope Sola doesn't start hating me. I'll have to apologize to her later. After all, Sola's the only person I have left now. She whispered to a saga, cutting into her thoughts. Psst! A saga! Over here! You know, like... That old weird guy selling candies to little kids. That's how it would sound, probably. <laughs> Captain! Is something the matter? Yeah, I need your help. It's kind of an emergency. The safety of the ship. No. The entire galaxy is at stake. Those were the only words needed to snap a saga out of her doldrums. Alright! I'll be right over! <clears throat> Asaga joined the two time travelers in a secluded corner of the hangar. The trio whispered to each other. So, what's the situation, Captain? Shields thought to himself as to how to best explain the obviously very convoluted situation to Asaga. <sighs> it turns out we were all right after all, and that little girl really is a prototype. I had the doctor here run a more detailed biometric scan and there is no question about it anymore. So, she really was a spy all this time. Asaga's eyes lit up with excitement. I knew it! Somehow I could feel it in my gut, you know? I'm glad it was just me going crazy. So, are you going to detain her? Well, that's the problem. We can do anything which will tip off the prototypes that we're on to them. Everything I just said is top secret, spoken between just the three of us, okay? In fact, I will just play along with her like I've done in the past. We'll be working in the shadows to unravel their plot, but publicly we're all still being fooled. Understood, Captain! So, do you know what exactly the prototypes plan to do? That is... Now this was where things get really complicated. Oh god damn it. Three days from now, we will have defeated Pact and liberated Syrah, but the whole thing set her up to gather Admila Grey, that little old fam, yeah, and the entire Alliance military leadership all into a single victory celebration where the prototypes will spring their trap and massacre everyone. The ring leader of the trap will be that little girl. I see, I see! So basically we have three days to stop this mass assassination from happening. Uh, you know, assassination usually means 
quietly. <laughs> that wasn't quiet at all. Without tipping the prototypes of that they've been found out. Yeah, that's basically the switch. Alright, this sounds exactly like the plotline to some spy film. Sign me up, Captain! Shield sighed in relief at how easy Asaga just accepted the situation. If it had been anyone else, no doubt they would have had a mountain of questions and doubts. Uh, he was right in trusting that Asaga would be up to the task. Alright! <laughs> that fight right out. Now we had to put our next course of action in motion. Unfortunately, he hadn't given this part much thought himself. It looked like he would just have to come up with something on the fly based on the fragmented memories he had of the chain of events which led to the Liberation Day Massacre. According to our intel, that little girl will enter the prototype, prototype's mindstream tomorrow during the Battle of Syria. For Syria. It will be at that moment when she receives a neural message which will, will brainwash her into carrying out the assassination. We must take every action to ensure that she does not enter the mindstream. Seems like a simple enough solution. From what I can remember, the little girl as she is now would be utterly incapable of killing a single insect. But you don't know that. Much less a room full of people. You don't know that. The sole cause of her actions that day was her body being controlled by the leader of the prototypes, who we had all presumed to have died on the Nightmare Ascendant. If we were to simply prevent Chigara, that little girl we don't like, from being mind controlled, then the massacre would never happen. I see, I see. So right now, she's like a sleeper agent, who doesn't even realize she has a secret mission to assassinate the Alliance military leadership. Yeah, that's how it is. Understood, Captain. Then I'll keep my eyes on her and make sure she doesn't try communicating with the proter prototypes. Hmm. Hey, I'm glad. A saga. All this time, I was afraid that Chigara was going to take you away forever. I thought for sure we were gonna get fooled by her. Yeah, I guess I wasn't giving you enough credit, huh, Captain? <laughs> <clears throat> she doesn't know after all. How stupid Kaito was. Alright, here's a big chance I've always been waiting for. You can do it myself! Hey, Captain! Does this mean you trust me? Uh, so, uh, suddenly, more memories flashed by. This time, the images playing back in Shield's head didn't cause pain. Instead, they filled his heart with ease. A war empress. Yes, that happened after everything happened after the massacre. The feeling of relief when he heard her voice over the comb in that lifeboat. It was Asaka who had found him out there, drifting in space. Even though the details were still fuzzy, he could sense that this girl loved him the most out of all the girls on board the ship. Of course I trust you, Asaka. You are always here, watching my back. <laughs> <laughs> what the hell is up with this sad development? It feels like the captain totally just forgot about her! Man, does this ma mean that he was just acting lovey dovey before with her to mess with the prototypes all this time? Oh, he sure got me good with that act! I feel like a total idiot now! Well, she doesn't know the truth. Yeah, that sure is a ton of my back. Hey, captain, after all of this over! Let's ride off into the sunset together, big kiss and all, just like in the movies, alright? Hasaka's sure got in both, eh? Yep. Of course I have! Besides, the captain said he trusts me, right? So, what's the big problem? What? You have a problem? Eh? Well, do ya? Asaka. <laughs> but before he could answer Asaka's feelings, the klaxon sounded. The hangar crew sprang to action as the ship went into condition red. Man and woman readied the riders for immediate action. And we can take a break to drink some tea. Oh shit, I forgot! Ah, crap, got to 30! I just confess my love to you! I just raised my dumb death flag! <laughs> Asanga looked around in a panic. Forget about that now. Come down, we better. Make ourselves scarce. Okay, Asaga, stay safe out there. 
Shield Swords manage to calm Asaga down. Alright, I'll be back! With that, Claude and Shield tore away from the hangar. Shield's collection was coming back. It was about this time when the pack fleet advanced using to launch a frontal attack using their riders to decimate the Alliance's shield cruisers so that their battleship could whittle down the Alliance fleet from a distance using laser attacks. He heard Ava's voice over the ship while intercom, and that's actually what we already played through, but well, never mind. Oh, hands! Battle stations! The pack fleet is approaching a position! Huh? We can't let the crew see you here? Claude opened the Mitas tunnel and crawled inside. <laughs> Hurry! Despite knowing that another kind of shields was no doubt rushing to the bridge right now, he couldn't help but feel like a pathetic coward crawling inside Mantan's tunnel to hunt through this battle. Ah, uh, my place was on the bridge. I have to protect everyone. Now that I think about it, he was on the bridge, so he wasn't really protecting anyone from there. Well, maybe only Ava, who we saved in first Sunrider when we didn't allow her to go to to the reactor or yeah I think that was a reactor all right funny his better senses reigned in his emotions no he just had to leave that up to the saga and the rest of the crew he wasn't going to protect anyone by marching to the bridge right now she swallowed his bride and crawled into the maintenance shaft Claude shut the gate swallowing the two of them in darkness and yes, they get got intimate. Let's well not intimate, but as much as her boobs landed on his back and so on. Let's keep it. So now the fire is on the deck, and we have to save or don't save the crewman. And the, obviously we will save him again. So we save we save him, and you know then run through everything. Then this is little. Robot arrives, and uh, as before, we will fall back, and we'll fall back, close the freaking door or whatever it was. But this guy will somehow get through it with two shots. Then we don't have any weapons that we can hide with. But Claude has bazooka. However, she missed, and we take the bazooka. And, uh, somehow we had the rocket as well. And boom, we win, and everything ends pretty well. Okay, that's oh, that also happened. So, let's sneak back to the hangar. Actually, that happened, but before it was a bit different. She's getting out of this nightmare situation. He stood and emerged from the cargo crate, taking a huge breath of fresh air. He had just spent the past six hours scoped up inside the small cargo crate with Claude, so that's the same. The ship had shook and jostled as it engaged in evasion maneuvers and took hits, until the f he felt as if he was going to suffocate against Claude's voluminous body. Oops. For what seemed like an eternity, he suffered indignity after indignity while Claude seemed to thoroughly enjoy every moment of his suffering. Huh. I wouldn't mind such situation. I don't understand him. How would you not enjoy such time with Claude, but you would enjoy that little Shigara? I mean, something is wrong with him. Feeling far off the that he stepped out into the outside world, feeling like a man re emerging to society after a long pri prison sentence. The ship had now returned to condition yellow. For now, it appeared the battle had concluded. After checking that the situation was clear, he pulled Claude from the crate. Come on, the coast is clear. Let's sneak back to the hangar to meet up with Asagna. The two of them wandered in the hangar, lurking under the shadows of the rider base again. They found Asaga waiting for them beside the Black Jack's maintenance bay. Asaga Druvia returning for beauties, huh? The flags have nothing on me. Yeah, welcome back. Good to see you in one piece. And I now have a lead, thanks to what happened during the battle. Shit remembered what Saga was talking about. During the battle, the Liberty's shoulder maneuvering wolf had fractured, sending it into an uncontrollable spin. While uh, he was. Well, she wasn't injured, the little girl. 
the other one. Well, Asaga does look that little here. His passive had sent her to the sick bay to be on the safe side. We could nab her while she's sleeping in sick bay and hide her somewhere for the duration of the battle. We tried that. But we have another problem. Huh? But I thought all we had to do was prevent her from entering the mainstream. I haven't quite explained the entire situation yet. Sorry. The packed forces under Fontana's command scheduled to reinforce the combined fleet to more actually have been sabotaged by the prototypes. There is a Trojan virus embedded deep in their ship's system, which will allow the prototypes to hijack control of their ships using their hyper brain waves. The little Greg, uh, piece of crap will enter the prototypes' mainstream, attempting to disrupt their control over Fontana's ships. However, during that time, the leader of the prototypes will empt herself into Shigara's mind, allowing her to assume control of Shigara during the award ceremony, even in the case that she is defeated. I honestly don't know the details of how the prototypes' mainstream work, but from what I've heard from Lin, their bodies can be controlled by their leaders at any time, although their prototype being controlled can resist to a certain degree as well, with a strong enough force of will. Wait a second! As I thought, so you can win with this! Oh, so basically... So basically, maybe the little girl actually wanted all of that to happen. Huh. So maybe it's not only to a certain degree, but you can basically win with the force of control. Okay. Eh, I'm impressed. You're really knowledgeable about the protomise, Captain. I guess you've been studying your enemy. No, actually I've learned all of this through first hand experience. The problem is that if Shigara doesn't enter the mainstream, then we'll all die tomorrow when the prototypes assume command of all of Fontana's ships. Unless, if we're somehow able to send an encrypted transmission to Fontana now, warning him of the Trojan, then he could potentially start devising a countermeasure right now. At the very least, he could pull his forces back so that the prototypes can't use his ships against us. There's an encrypted FTL communicator in my office, I could use that. Ah, uh, then there's a problem solved, right? Shields couldn't help but feel guilty about leaving Asaga in the dark about the most important snippet of information. That he has clothes did not belong to this timeline, and so he couldn't just waltz into his office and use the cob whenever he felt like it. Looks like I'm also going to have to figure out a way to sneak into my office while my other self occupied and have a little chat with Fontana. Oh, anything! Uh, so he got a kidnapped Chigara for nearly 24 hours, right? If we uh, just nab her from sickbay, people are gonna realize that she's gonna missing, and then they will come searching for her, which will just steal the prototypes of what that we're on to them. Asaga has a point. If Shigara just vanishes into thin air, people are going to start asking questions. We've got to keep the fact that we've kidnapped her a secret for as long as possible. Wait a second. Wait a second. Asaga, is your thinking going where I think your thinking is going and it's actually going where my thinking was going before as well? For I probably haven't mentioned it. I don't really remember. Do you mean Lin? Lin? Are we trying to use Lin? How are we going to do that? I will just take the risk. We have to kidnap her as soon as possible and there is no time to waste. There is a certain body double sitting in our rig right now who looks almost identical. That's true. Huh. Let's take the risk. Understood, sir. Huh? Now comes explaining the hard part. There's no other way to explain this plan now to Asaga without revealing the truth. Asaga, there's also something else I need to explain. Shoot. Uh, there is kind of another Kaito Shields on board this ship right now. Eh? Yeah, I mean, the prototypes have a copy of you too? Not quiet. I'm not actually the captain I know. I'm actually from the future. That's how I know everything I just told you. To me, 
I'm just recounting what I've already lived through. Hey! Hey! It's totally awesome, Captain! A real lifetime traveler! Holy shit! I've dreamed of something like this happening, but I've never actually thought it would actually happen! <laughs> she is the best. As I hop up and down like a hyperactive girl upon receiving something she had always wanted for her birthday present. Uh, she's totally fine with it. There was no point in even keeping it a secret. Can I get your autograph, Captain? Um, not a celebrity, Asaga. Um, actually, there's not quite the full situation either. There's also currently another cloth tree Leonie sick bear right now, tending to Shigara as we speak. What? Come to think of it, Claude's position in this universe is no different from me. Of course, there would be also another past Claude Trileo wandering about in this timeline too. So we'll have to devise a plan to kidnap her and that little girl out from under my nose without my best self realizing what's going on. She dropped his head, so there was another wrinkle in this plan. Well, your past self's a time traveler too, right? So why don't you just walk up to her and explain the situation? Because that would for sure solve the problem. Ah, uh, sorry, Captain, but there are certain reasons why I can do that. It might be related to the fabric of the universe tearing right in half. In fact, I think it'd be best if I remained out of sight of my past self for the duration of my stay here. For all our sakes. What the hell is Clothing getting at here? Alright, then there... here is what we're gonna do. I'm going to go to the sick bay and distract the timeline cloth while Asaga sneaks in and wields that little girl's medical trolley way. You two will take Shigara to crew quarter 8, which is currently unoccupied and wait until they arrive. And don't forget to also take some sleeping pills or sleeping shots, because what she got already is uh, half of the... half of what she was supposed to be given. I'll try to be the hostile to as soon as I can. Once you've regrouped, Claude will use the floor access hatch to recall Shigara to maintenance room D4 while Asanga runs to the mess hall and calls the other cutter sheets out on the comm. I'll then use that chance to sneak into my office and send Fontana and then creep at Claude. Do you get all that? As a scoop then? Let's roll! Alright. Good luck. Okay, simply epic. Meanwhile, the other cutter sheets sat in his office trying to mind the pan. Uh, battle plans for tomorrow's battle. However, his thoughts couldn't help but wonder to that little girl who was currently resting in sick bay, which I still can't understand the reason for. Perhaps he should pay her a visit sometime before the battle. Uh oh. Here's Dorba Rang. Come in! Captain! Is something the matter, Ava? Um, I've come to report a truly strange anomaly on board the ship. An anomaly? Of what sort? You're going to have a hard time believing this, but. I heard rumors circling around the crew that you were at deck 2 during the previous battle, and that you single handedly took down a drone and saved the entire damage control team. What? I've heard some crazy rumors, but that's. that one's new. During the battle, we were indeed struck by an experimental pack weapon which introduced a hunter drone within the ship. Circus so examined the wreckage of its the drone and have confirmed that it was pack made. I've summarized the incident in the latest report in your desk. Ava eyed the large stack of unread reports sitting beside him. Crap, haven't gotten to that one yet. Concerned by the rumors circulating amongst the crew and the findings of our security, I took the liberty of examining the drone on secret footage and I found this. Ava handed him a hollow containing a video. He chose drop when he saw its content. It was him and Claude, or at least two people who look identical to themselves wandering about the ship. What in the hell's name? Indeed, I was shocked beyond words as well when I discovered this revelation. It appears there are two intruders on board the ship, who have impersonated you as well as our acting medical officer. Their purpose appears unclear. Save the universe. Shin stood from his chair, his heart now pounding. It could provide a lot. Apprehend these two intruders immediately. Put security on high alert. Review all of our security login, uh, logs in search of these doppelgangers. Outer marines put on armed patrols throughout the ship, but they are to capture the intruder's life. Sir! T minus 50 
two hours before the liberation massacre. 16 hours until the Tutugara enters the mainstream. I kind of am getting good at controlling, at calling her. Not what I was used to calling her. Surprising. Shields enter the stick bay uh, to distract the clothes. Alright. Grimest to discover that she was sick, sleeping two beds away. That's the same thing. But he had an idea. Pretends. She dropped. Okay, that's the same thing. So let's 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 go. Let's keep. <laughs> yeah, that's the same thing. That was pretty funny, actually. But let's keep. Let's keep. To the choice. And here we are going to steal the hollow again because we need it. And then we walked out. As he walked, and activated the hollow search. Yeah, so we get the idea what what that little girl actually is. And yeah, let's go here. <clears throat> You're back. As you can see, the plan went exactly as planned. He saw she girl tied up to the chair, so unconscious from the sedation. Despite sex of kidnapping her, Shields had no cause to celebrate. The you're gonna have to explain yourself. He pulled out the hollow. I found this in your old self's office. Eh, what is it? You've been communicating with the prototypes all this time, haven't you? There's much on this hollow, giving away all our movements to the enemy and even a medical report which you wrote, completely invalidating the other report you gave us at Shigarbus on the prototype. Eh? It's all true. I was aligned with the prototypes during the this time frame. But that puts me in the past. Poor clothes turned a new leaf now. I'm fighting for the good guys. Why were we working for the prototypes during this time period? A simple alignment of interest, that's all. I've sought to rally the galaxy around you, just like the prototypes. But after the liberation day massacre occurred, I realized our interests diverged. That's when I left them and took matters to my own hands. The prototypes wanted what? Yeah, have I sought to make you the leader of humanity, but to control you as a pu puppet. So that they would rule in your stead, but... Let's just say that plan never quite planned out, due to division within the prototypes themselves. That's quite a lot to take in. And I've heard this before already. I was fine with helping the prototypes accomplish that, but then the massacre happened. So you're saying basically that you used to work for the prototypes, but now you don't? That doesn't get you off the hook yet. I also found this inside the hollow. She'd open the final file and show it to Claude. The future can only be saved by destroying everything. What does this mean? <laughs> Looks like you finally discovered the hard part of this mission. It's pretty complicated to explain, but the skinny of it is basically if we were to succeed in this mission and toward the liberation of the massacre, both this universe and the past universe where we come from will collapse and cease to exist. And it Turns out the space time continues really sensitive to time paradoxes and resolves them quite forcefully. C -c Collapse, you mean we all die, and anyways, uh, even if we win, then what the hell is the point of any of this? Mm, uh, you're thinking like a human. No, it will simply be wiped from existence. Dying is a natural phenomena which must inevitably happen to all life forms, but is an entirely different concept from never existing at all. You traveled here from a future in which the Liberation Day massacre occurred in order to prevent it. But if you succeed in your mission, the Kaito Shields who traveled back in time would cease to exist as the massacre now never takes place. So then, who would be the man who stopped the massacre? A true, logical country. In other words, a time paradox. So, then is the future really impossible to change? The future can be changed, that's why I brought you here. At the end of this journey, you must, take a, uh, you must make a choice. Either you stop the Liberation Day Massacre from occurring and avert the tragedy which befalls upon everyone and destroy this universe and the universe you came from and replace them with the new universe you create with your decision or you let the massacre occur, accept the tragedy, tragedy then this universe will remain untouched and connect with your timeline the universe we know will continue to exist from the better of wars you're telling me, if I go through with this, everyone I know will vanish from the face of the universe, but then a new universal copies of those same people will be created. That's the gist of it, yeah. And that is the reason why I brought you here. The key here is that the law of causality 
does everything in its power to resolve time paradoxes, and it does that by deleting the universe where the paradox occurs and then creating a new universe which can then logically continue to exist from that point on. In this case, you and everyone in this universe, as well as everyone in the universe where the massacre occurred, could be wiped from existence to eliminating the time paradox. But then a new universe where the massacre never occurred would be born, and everyone would still exist in the universe, completely oblivious to the fact the massacre even occurred, or that there was a desperate mission to prevent it. Then we can still save everyone by creating a new universe where the massacre isn't prevented but simply never existed at all. Ah, now you are understanding how this all works, Captain. <laughs> I don't understand how to do this, my head hurts. But India. The me right now is gonna vanish from existence, but then I will still be another saga who won't even know there was a mission to change the future. I'll just live on never knowing there even was an event like the Liberation Day Mask. Basically. In the circumstances. In this circumstance, I intentionally sought to create a time paradox in order to manipulate the law of causality into destroying the universe you don't want and into creating the one you do want. Well, it was pretty drastic, but it's not like there's anyone out there who can stop me, so <laughs> It's pretty convenient. This little quirk that the law of causality has. I've been using it to create and destroy universe for... Ah, I forgot. I'm immortal. Who knows how long I've been doing this. Anyways, now that your choices have been laid out in front of you, I want to watch you choose Kato Shields, Hero of the Galaxy. That's the entire reason why I brought you here. All of this is so I can watch you more. I want to watch you run around, fighting desperately against impossible odds. I want to see the tears in your eyes when you fail, a euphoria coursing through your vines when you are victorious. The bigger the stakes, the more torture the dilemmas, the mightier your enemies, the more I want to see you fight, because it brings me so much pleasure seeing you in action. <laughs> Cloud's entire body flushed bright red as she squirmed her legs. I think I might come a little. <laughs> Clutch, you bastard. She's telling me, just like always. Can't think of it. Was there ever, ever a moment when she wasn't playing me a little like, like a fiddle during the whole time I've known her? Uh, thought I am true with being her plaything. We're too deep in this now. Uh, we're in this too deep now. We have to keep working together. Oh ho ho! Okay, we're too deep in this now. Dang, good call, Captain. I knew you could count on it. But let's end the episode here, actually. I've made the choice. Let's end the episode. Yes. And we'll see where this is will going in the next one. So, see you then. Bye-bye.